You're going to want to buckle your seatbelts for this one. <laughs> God, this is a doozy. Just thinking about this still makes me cringe. It still makes me angry and a little uncomfortable. So let's get into it. Today, I'm going to tell you about our very first bad customer. Let's bring it back to November 2019. We've got a couple orders under our belt. We're feeling pretty good. Early on, before anyone really knew who we were, we got a lot of our sales through Facebook Marketplace. And so every morning, we would wake up and respond to two or three dozen is this still available messages. Now, it was very important to us that we answered every single message because we never knew which conversation would be the conversation that led to a sale. So one day, I'm talking to this lady, she wants a table, two benches. She sends me a Pinterest photo of a table that she likes and says that that's the style that she wants. I ask her what color she wants, and she says that she's really not sure, just something dark and brown. Cool. I can work with that. She sends me some stained swatches that she's kind of mixed up and stained on this scrap piece of wood. And uh, she said that she's still really unsure, that I'm the expert here and that she trusts me. She just wants something dark and something brown. Now, at the time, our best-selling table was a dark walnut-stained table. It was a very rustic barn wood look, uh, and it matched pretty much everything. And it was dark and brown, so that was the obvious choice. She was happy with it, and so we were good to go. Now, I have to give you a little bit of info on how all of this works for you to really understand this story. Before a customer ever deposits, we send them an invoice. And on that invoice are all the teeny tiny little details of their order from the stain color to the dimensions to the base style and any other little specifications that they want us to keep in mind during the build. And so we urge all of our customers, we tell them, please take a look at the invoice before you deposit, make sure that all the details are correct, make sure that we didn't miss anything, because once you deposit and once we start the build, that is what we're working off of. That is our guide. This lady gets her invoice, she pays her deposit, and so we get started. We're wrapping up her set, just about ready to go out for delivery, and it's looking great. We're super happy with how it came out, and so I decide to send her a photo. That was mistake number one. This lady is literally the reason that I stopped sending people photos before we got to their house and delivered their table. She goes, oh, how wide is that bench? I said, oh, it's standard, you know, 18 inches. That's what's on your invoice. And she goes, oh, that's not going to fit where I want it to fit. So I said, that's, you know, no problem. We can totally make it smaller. Just tell me the size that you need. Now, this is where things take a turn. Up until this point, this lady was friendly. She was excited. She was easy to talk to. I tell her that since her benches are basically completely done um, and we're going to have to take them apart and rebuild them, that she's going to have to pay a small fee for any new materials and also for our time. It was a last minute change that could have easily been avoided had she looked at her invoice or even just told us ahead of time the specific size that she needed. As soon as that message dropped, shit changed. She was like, well, why do I have to pay for that? Can't you just reuse all the same materials that you used to build my benches in the first place? And yes, there were some materials that we could reuse, some we had to replace. Um, but regardless of that, we had two finished pieces of furniture, two completely finished benches that now, because of an oversight on her part, we had to completely disassemble, sand down, polyurethane stain, back to the bare wood, recut, rebuild, stain, and polyurethane again. And so it wasn't my responsibility to take that loss for my time or the cost of materials. If I had made that mistake, if she told me the size that she needed and I built the bench to the wrong size, I'm absolutely taking responsibility for that. That's my fault. I'm covering the cost of materials. I'm getting it done as quickly as possible. And I'm apologetic because it is my fault. But this here was not my responsibility. It was not my fault. If I had made the mistake, if she told me the size that she needed and I built the benches to the wrong size, of course that's my responsibility. I'm taking the loss on my part, that's obvious. But this was not my fault here. From that point on, she was a completely different customer. She was cold. She was hard to talk to. Things were already moving in a bad direction. So we finish up the build. We load up the table and two benches in the Nissan, and we're on our way. We get to the house, and she comes outside, takes a look at the table, the two benches. She doesn't really say much, you know, goes back inside, and so we bring everything in, we assemble the table, polish it off, and the first thing she says is, 
that's not the right color. That's not the color that I wanted. And so I say, oh, you know, that's the color that we talked about. That's the color that we agreed on. She said that it doesn't look the same as the photos. And so I explained to her that, you know, there are a lot of different variations in wood, and sometimes what you see in just a small sample or a stain swatch uh, doesn't show all of the variation uh, that you'll see in a full table. And that things like lighting, or whether it's on your phone screen, my phone screen, the type of wood that you stain the swatches on, all of these things can affect the overall stain color and change the way it looks just a little bit. She goes upstairs. We don't really know what to do. Her husband comes downstairs and says that she's really not happy with the color and asks us if we want to take the table back. I think we were both at a loss for words <laughs> here. Nothing like this had ever happened before. We were in shock that it was happening, and we didn't really know how to handle it. But in the back of our minds, we're just thinking like, okay, we're a brand new business, one bad review, and no one's going to want to order from us ever again. So we decide to take the table apart, load it back into the Nissan, and take it back to the shop. The entire ride home, we're like, what the hell just happened? Like, what do we do now? And so we decide to just suck it up and sand the entire table and two benches down to the bare wood. We mix up a new stain color, we get her approval before we stain, and then we restain the table and two benches. We send her a photo, and now she doesn't like the frame design even though it matched the frame design of the Pinterest table that she sent us earlier on. I hop on the phone with her, and the two things that really stand out for me from that conversation, first when she said, you know, if you can't make the table that I want, and when she honeyed me. Listen, honey, I know you're new at this. Like, excuse me. I'm trying to be professional here. I'm going out of my way to accommodate you, to try to make things right. The least you could do is be professional back. Don't honey me. It's disrespectful. And that's one of the hardest parts about running a business as a young person, and especially at times as a young girl, people don't take you seriously. They don't value your time or your experience. They think they could take advantage of you and get one over on you. And more often than not, they want to pay close to nothing for what they want. You know, some of my favorite lines that I've heard are, you know, we were looking at all these prices and they're so high. That's why we came to you. Or we'd love to buy a table from you, but we just don't want to pay the delivery fee. Like you could pick it up if you want. <laughs> and that can be a difficult road to navigate, especially so early on when you're first starting to build your reputation as a business. You're much more inclined to just take one for the team and bite your tongue. The more Brandon and I thought about it, the less and less we wanted her to have this table. We put so much time and energy into the things that we build, and we really love it that it's always such a positive experience. And she seemed like the type of person who, no matter how hard you tried, you just wouldn't be able to make her happy. She would find something wrong with anything, no matter what you did. And so we just decided that it wasn't worth it. It was the first and only time we ever refunded a customer. We took the loss on the time and cost of materials, but at the end of the day, it was a total relief. And we actually ended up selling her set to a really great guy, uh, the owner of a coffee company, for his rental property. And he ended up being a returning customer, and so things really worked out with her set on that end. We went home that night and typed up our terms and conditions. Up until that point, we had no protections in place for ourselves as a small business. And so we detailed everything that went wrong during that build and that delivery. We detailed how payments work and specified standard sizes. We added an entire section about revisions and change orders, something that we had no idea about up until that time. And so we really took this as an opportunity to make sure that moving forward, nothing like this would ever happen again. And so the reason that I'm saying all of this is because on the surface, this was a very negative experience. It was stressful, there was miscommunication, and we lost money. What made it all okay, and this is something to keep in mind when you're faced with a difficult situation, is that something positive came from it. One of the most important things, in my opinion, in business and in life, and I cannot stress this enough, is to turn your negative experiences into learning experiences. Because then, at the very least, you've gained something from it. It's not all bad, and you won't make the same mistake again. It's a great way to stay positive, to keep moving forward, and to set yourself up much better for next time.